Back in mid-April, WWE released a large portion of their mid and undercard talent. Since then, we've had referee Mike Kyoda and Zack Ryder turn up in AEW, Hurt Corkins, Yarrick Ong, 3EC, Seath Hleiter, Doc Gallows and Arl Canderson turn up in the Impact Zone, Rusev defect to Twitch, and... Drake Maverick returned to NXT, and the future of another released top WWE name might have just been leaked. This is potentially a spoiler for next Saturday's big episode of AEW Dynamite, which was taped in Florida yesterday. So skip ahead to the next story using YouTube's fancy new chapters feature on the timeline, or stay right here as we enter the spoiler room brawl in three, two, CM Punk is gonna be the leader of Retribution and get all his MMA wins back on Raw Underground, just Kidding. One. It's the big red machine. Eric Rowan. According to a fan claiming to have been at the tapings, the former Rowan in WWE makes his debut on next Saturday's Dynamite using his real name, Joseph Rudd. He shows up in a mask, helps Brody Lee win the TNT Championship from Cody Rhodes, and then reveals his identity, presumably joining the Dark Order. Apparently the match is very overbooked, but in an entertaining way. The account also claims NWA Women's Champion Thunder Rosa showed up at the tapings, challenging Shida to a title title match at All Out. Reddit Insider Space Force One has been the source of several AEW leaks over recent months, like Eric Bischoff's debut, but this Rowan story comes from user Weird Warthog, who hasn't broken any stories of their own before. Take it with a pinch of salt. As WrestlingNews.co have added, they've been contacted by someone else at the tapings who said the Reddit spoilers are false. Which you should also take with a pinch of salt, because that's what happened when WWE tried to cover up one of their developments mental wrestlers, leaking the result of Keith Lee versus Adam Cole. Are you excited to see Rowan in AEW if the spoilers are true? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below because I'll be replying to people from out of his big bushy beard. Before we get on with the rest of the news, I just want to say a huge thank you to this video's sponsor. I'm going super scion for this. Crunchyroll! Crunchyroll is the world's largest anime streaming service with the most complete online library on the internet. New shows uploaded just hours after their first airing in Japan. And even an online merch store. You can probably leave it there for the anime effects now. It's got nearly every anime series you can imagine. My Hero Academia, Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, Crunchyroll Original Tower of God, and even one of my favorite shows of all time, anime or otherwise, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Because move aside Ishii versus Suzuki, it's got the actual best New Japan no cell match of all time with Robert Roode versus Scar. You can see just how incredible Full Metal is for yourself, along with many, many more shows, by going to crunchyroll.com forward slash wrestle talk, which gives you a two week premium trial totally free. And stay subscribed to it because that's the only true way to fully understand all Kenny Omega's wrestling Easter eggs. Please do support wrestle talk and visit crunchyroll.com forward slash wrestle talk for your two week free trial as it's a genuinely fantastic anime service and it also helps support us all here on the channel. Tell me what your favorite animes are in the comments below because I'll be replying to people from out of genuinely looking for new show recommendations to watch. Binge watch it all! But back to my other favourite anime, Eric Super Red and Spider Cage. A hundred years ago in January 2020, you might remember Rowan had started carrying a cage down to the ring. Sometimes it bit him, sometimes it terrified opponents, but it was always, always pretty crap. In a Q&A with sports skeeters Stephanie Chase, Rowan has revealed how superstars are mostly just as confused by WWE's creative plans for them as we are. One day, Rowan was just informed I was carrying a cage. I asked what's in it, and I was told, you'll find out. Apparently, it was going to contain a rodent of some kind that Rowan loved, which would be killed by an unspecified babyface champion, which would turn them heel. But they just kept extending it, extending it, extending it. 
extending it. At one point, Eric pitched they build a slightly larger cage so they could put the world's smallest woman in there, Jota Amgi, who had featured on American Horror Story. Me and her would be friends, and I would be protecting her from the atrocities of the outside world by locking her in the cage. Instead, they revealed it as a fake animatronic spider and had Drew McIntyre stomp it under his foot. Sometimes you've just got to trust in creative, Rowan. They, they really came through for you there. Interestingly, Rowan also revealed WWE asked him to film a cameo for the Bray Wyatt vs Braun Strowman swamp fight match at the horror show at Extreme Rules. Shortly after, his non-compete had expired. He was busy filming another project. But Rowan might not be the only wrestler AEW is looking to bring in, as we can exclusively reveal someone else the promotion has their eye on. WrestleTalk.com's Louis Dangor has been informed by his sources that Impact wrestler Ethan Page, who lost the tag team titles last month after a year-long reign, the longest in the promotion's history, has his contract expiring on the 31st of December. Page has been teasing on social media that he could be signing a new contract at the start of 2021, and our sources tell us one of the options is A E. W, who have been interested in Paige for some time. Paige has been building up his social media following as of late with Twitch streams and vlogs, and of course, a WrestleTalk interview with him, where he made the bold claim that Vince McMahon is the greatest wrestler of all time. Head over to WrestleTalk interviews to watch that. But bringing in so many new faces, especially right now, is unsustainable unless you release some of your existing roster. And for the first time in the company's 19 months of existence, it appears All Elite Wrestling have made their first ever talent firings, with Jimmy Havoc, B Priestley, and Sadie Gibbs being let go from the company. AEW themselves haven't yet officially announced the firings, but Havoc, Priestley, and Gibbs have all been removed from their roster page. Gibbs, who signed with AEW at last May's Double or Nothing, confirmed her release with a tweet. My journey, it's been one hell of a ride. I never expect it to get easier, I just expect my core values and perception to evolve, and for me always to find hashtag grace within moving forwards. Hashtag undefinable. Thank you so much, Tony Khan and AEW Wrestling, for giving me a chance of a lifetime. Brain hands emoji. The Wrestling Observer writes the reasons for the releases are not known. AEW president Tony Khan admitted back in May that the company was set to lose millions and millions of dollars without live events during the pandemic, and that while he didn't want to take it out on the wrestlers that worked for him, there's gonna be a day when someday we're going to have to let people go. Dave Meltzer did recently report, though, that AEW has become slightly profitable in the last few months. Instead, the reason might be more geographical than financial. Gibbs, Priestley, and Havoc are all English, and B and Sadie haven't been able to travel to the United States to wrestle for AEW during the pandemic. There's also their close affiliation to Japanese or women's promotion stardom. Initially, there appeared to be a working relationship between them and AEW, with other stardom wrestlers like Jamie Hayter and Ryo on the first few months of Dynamite. But late last year, New Japan owner Bushi Road, which still seems a bit burned by AEW being run by all its former top foreign stars who suddenly decided to leave them, like you did, Megan! Bought stardom and these appearances became less common. The two aren't without controversy either, reportedly having a fight backstage before last August's All Out pay-per-view. But while Gibbs and Priestley have hardly appeared on Dynamite, Jimmy Havoc was prominently featured alongside Kip Sabian in the first months of lockdown. He is by far the biggest release here, which comes after allegations of sexual assault. AEW issued a statement on Havoc on the 19th of June in the wake of numerous speaking out allegations, saying they are evaluating his status with our company and that they'd make a decision once he had received treatment and counselling in an effort to overcome the mental health and substance abuse challenges in his life. And that decision has now been made. Over in NXT, Velveteen Dream, another one of the wrestlers embroiled in the speaking out movement, made their return on Wednesday's episode, which has prompted Dream's accuser to issue a statement. Thank you for your support on Patreon, the Snapdragon King Ryo Odonte, and he's no jackass, Dano.
In April, Velveteen Dream was accused of sending indecent images of himself to a minor, which he denied in a statement on social media. These allegations resurfaced in June during the Speaking Out movement, and Dream was removed from TV after an NXT Championship feud with Adam Cole. Multiple reports at the time said he was done with the company. But then he returned to NXT on Wednesday's episode, inserting himself into the North American title picture. This has prompted one of his original accusers, Josh Fuller, to issue a statement on Twitter. It's a really shitty feeling that I feel like I can't say the things I want to about everything because of fear over my wrestling career. That shouldn't be okay. I'm not sure if I'll keep rambling about it, but I just want to say above anything, I never chose to speak out because of myself. It was completely over the kids he sexually harassed, and the fact that the internet tried to turn them into the bad people. Be sorry for them, not me. The only things really pissing me off from social media are the people claiming that it was clearly investigated when there's no proof or statement that ever was the case. Myself or anyone else involved weren't contacted by anybody to my knowledge. On to less horrible real life things, here's all the other news rounded up in the Hot Shots News Zip formerly known as the Shooting Gallery. Again, better names welcome. Despite it first being reported years ago, WWE themselves announcing it last summer. Then Vince McMahon reportedly firing the two executives in charge of the idea in January, then planning for it to happen again, then stalling the rollout for the paid and free tier versions. WWE will finally be adding the indie promotions it owns of Progress, WXW, ICW, and Evolve to the network tomorrow, August the 15th. Which means you can see me in the front rows of the early progress shows because I liked it before it was cool. WrestleVotes is reporting SummerSlam won't take place in the Performance Center. Instead, it'll move to the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida, along with all subsequent TV tapings. This has apparently boosted the morale of the WWE locker room, eager for a kind of return to pre-lockdown normalcy. Kind of normalcy like virtual fans. WWE won't be letting fans into the Amway Center for SummerSlam, so PW Insider claims they're considering having virtual fans on screen instead. I don't know how that will work. Over at AEW, Ryan Satin is reporting around 150 real-life fans were allowed into Daly's place for this week's Dynamite taping, all of them invited by AEW, potentially one of whom posted the spoilers earlier on. One of those fans, Jesse Davin, tweeted that safety precautions were closely followed, with all groups socially distanced from each other and mask enforcers in place to make sure no one was flouting the rules, adding she felt very safe and so did my husband. But did it make a difference to the all-important Demos War? Both AEW and NXT saw a drop from the previous week, but it was AEW who came out on top by 173,000 viewers. AEW drew 792,000, while NXT got 619. Booyaka. There's a new Tron movie and the Oscar-winning Parasite is getting a black and white version. Click the video on the right to watch Laurie and Luke talk movie news on Cineworld's What's On. And we've got an interview with the former Zack Ryder in WWE, Matt Cardona. Click the video under that to watch Louis Dangor's chat with Matt. And please get yourself a Crunchyroll free trial as it's amazing and it helps support the channel. Click the link in the video description below to go there. I've been Ollie Davis. Jam that jam.